It's Amy Sherman from MLive and Michigan's Best. Thanks for joining me. We're about to do our pick for Beer of the Week, and I couldn't be more excited to introduce my guest this week. He's one of my oldest friends from the beer industry and an all-around great guy. Joe Shorts from Shorts Brewing Company is our guest this week. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks. How are you Thanks. guys doing? We're doing okay. What's uh, what's happening right now in uh in your world, which I'm sure is like mine, kind of shrunken just just a little bit. Yeah, a um, lot of Zoom meetings, a lot of uh, virtual happy hours, a lot of homeschooling, a um, lot of time at home. A lot of time <laughs> at much. home. Now you have two younger kids, and you are uh, you're taking an act active role in homeschooling them. How's that going? Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a new world, and <laughs> we're trying to keep the balance of. Uh, uh, stress and productivity, you know, kind of managed. And it's a, it's a big learning uh, experience for, for everybody. You know, parents aren't really teachers. And, well, but, not in um, that, maybe not in that sense. We right, sure are teachers. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, Have you come up with any uh, tips or tricks you could share with uh, our readers that have so worked for you? For me, uh, you can, I, 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 I kind of use, uh, motivation tools like I would my dog, like you get a treat, right? If you do something good. So the treat for us is Minecraft. Ah. Uh, so let's get this assignment done and we can do 20 minutes of Minecraft. That so works. Sometimes that's a good carrot to dangle. I like that. Well, the reward I like to get after I have a nice, you know, really great day at work is of course to have a beer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes. you, you make some great ones, of course. That's my carrot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and in fact, it could be your carrot cake stout. That's a delicious beer, right? <laughs> it is a it is a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. Well, t for people who maybe are unfamiliar with shorts, um, let's do a little bit of a background of where you guys started and where you're at now. Um, you're based in Bel Air, which is, I'm sure, just as beautiful as always right now. And you're probably thanking your lucky stars that you're based up there. Yeah, so we're uh, just north northeast of Traverse City up by the Pinky. Um, we opened in 2004, um, so we just we would have celebrated our 16th birthday party. We 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 turned 16 uh, at the end of April, and uh, normally we blow the streets out, and it's a big fundraiser for uh, community development here in Bel Air. But um, yeah, I sort of cut my teeth on brewing as a as a late teen, uh, at the age of 19. I I had an affinity for for craft beer and taught myself how to how to make it instead of uh, finding people to buy it for me. And through that process, <laughs> I really uh, fell in love um, with how beer was made and um, kind of had a knack for it. And so I pursued that. And uh, 16 years later, I'm, uh, I'm you know, we're uh, Michigan's third largest brewery and we've got a production facility in Elk Rapids and our uh, charming little pub here in Bel Air. And uh, like everybody else, we're just trying to keep doing what we love to do and living where we want to live amidst, uh, you know, global pandemic. So, and beer's been helpful. It's been incredibly helpful. What kind of changes have you seen since the pandemic started? Have you seen, um, obviously the pub is, is closed right now, which is a big part of the Shorts experience. Mm -hmm. uh, what's happening in cans and bottles and distribution? So distribution, I mean, fortunately we're, um, you know, an essential service, which means that we're supplying um, retailers with product. Um, but for all of our on-premise partners, uh, you know, the draft uh, has really taken a dive and it's been great to see on-premise folks be creative and, and try to uh, diversify what they can, um, given that we can't have uh, pub people come in. Um, so we've been doing a lot of to-go food and uh, growler sales, uh, our growler sales out of the pub are actually two to three times higher than our package product sales. Wow. Um, so we, we're liking to see, uh, you know, our, our other hospitality partners embrace uh, these kind of uh, creative, you know, methods to keep business rolling. And then, of course, uh, production um, for retailers is um, obviously all package product now. So, um it's keeping uh, it's keeping production rolling, um, not as robust as we would have otherwise, but um, enough to uh, to really keep uh, keep people working, which is great. That is that's fantastic. Now you guys are a huge summer destination. Mm -hmm. How are you wrapping your head around how to prepare for that 
with the current situation? You know, um, the nice weather weekends that we've had the last couple of weeks has, has been uh, interesting because we've seen an, an influx of just people out and about. And I'm not sure if those are weekend warriors or if those are people that are not in Zoom meetings Monday through Friday. <laughs> but um, it's definitely going to be, you know, nobody knows. We're just, you know, hoping for the best and, and kind of taking it week by week. And um, we obviously, we're going to have, uh, I guess, restrictions. But, you know, they did allow for other businesses to start opening. So we're starting to see like bikers and hikers. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to start seeing uh, kayakers. And I know that the boat ramps have been busy on the weekend. So I do feel like there is going to be more human traffic, obviously socially distanced. Um, and we're still going to be able to sell food and beer to go. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to generate the Northern Michigan Shorts Brew experience at, at a social, socially distanced uh, sort of program. I hope, I hope you can too. Now you mentioned that the boat ramps were starting to get a little bit busy. Have you gone water skiing yet? I haven't. I actually, um, I got a new hip uh, <laughs> in the middle of February. I'm not, right? la I'm not laughing at your new hip. I'm just laughing over the fact how nonchalant you are about it. <laughs> yeah, so I wore my last one out pretty good. And in, uh, in February 7th, I think it was, it was my surgery date. And so I'm 10, 11 weeks in now. And I've been told I could go back to normalish activities and, and I haven't been able to see my doctor um, post uh, op because of the, uh, the COVID issue, but um, we've been communicating by email and text. And he said I could go back to like normal activities, but I don't really know if um, that's a pretty ambiguous thing. Um, so I've been doing some physical labor around the house and it's been sore and I'm reluctant to, to go skiing right away. And plus the water is still pretty cold. Um, it's still cold at night, you know, it's down into the high 20s. And um, that's, that's potential to, to freeze your boat motor up if, uh, well, you know, if you're not have a warm place off. to store yeah. it after you're done using it. So, so um, practical. <laughs> but the boys, we, we definitely want to get the boat in because um, the boys have uh, starting to take an interest in it, especially Elmer. He's been wakeboarding now. And let's face it, we need something to do that's not um, in and or around the house. So excited to to get nautical regardless. I like yeah. it. Agreed. All right. Well, we are here to talk about uh, beer of the week, but before we get to that, when we will get to that, uh, during this pandemic, what beer would people find in your hands unless it's one of the beers of the week? <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, um, anniversary party would have been um, the last uh, weekend of April. That's when we come out with Nicey, which is our um, spiced beer. wheat beer. And so we still make that it's on draft. You can get it on draft at the pub. I just got a keg of that from my house. Um, so when it's hot and, um, it's sunny out, you know, that's kind of the beer that I like to have or anything light. Um, you know, locals is a great one to have, which is part of our refreshing. Hold on, hold on, here. hold on. Let's um, do it now. Yeah. Podcast okay. Four. Beer yeah, little... of the week. Pull it up there, Joe. <laughs> oh, I just got my, I just pulled four out and put them on ice over here. Oh, very nice. So this is uh, the refresher pack from you guys. And this is a new offering, right? Yeah, we, I believe it launched like not last, maybe last, just last week is kind of blown up. Um, we can't keep up with it right now, which is a great problem to have. It was just going to be like a, a hit it and quit. Um, but we're, we're exploring keeping it, um, available all summer now just because of the popularity. And if I didn't mention this already, um, we've been doing beer deliveries, um, in Antrim County, Kalkaska County, Grand Traverse County. And then we're doing weekly hits in, um, Detroit Metro. And I think we're going to start adding some other areas. Um, but that skew has just been like dominating all of the beer orders. So, um, we're excited about it. For well, good reason. Instead and of hit it and quit it, now it's going to be the hit of the summer, I bet. So let's talk people so, a little yeah. bit. Because what this is essentially is a it's a low cal uh, pack of beer. So these low are cal, low ABV. four options. There's four yep. beers in there. So we actually have four beers of the week, which is insanity. But why not? It's one pack, it's four beers. <laughs> so let's go through them. We've got, uh, I've got them all lined up here too. 
Why don't you tell us about each one, Joe? Because it's right. a pretty cool variety of flavors. You go everywhere from fruity to a stout to uh, hoppy. Uh, you've got kind of everything covered. Yes, um, and that's kind of the idea. Uh, so you can get a get this um, mix pack and and hopefully achieve all the flavor profiles of the folks that you might be um, socially distancing, um, <laughs> having beers with, right? Yes, perfect call. Um, Good call. <laughs> so locals is um, it's actually our best selling beer, but it's a light beer that we've made since two thousand four. We thought it was appropriate to have this in the pack. Um, to keep people um, reminded of uh, how great it is as a light, refreshing, low cal low ABV option. And then myself, I've been really, um, so the keg I'm replacing with my nice keg is uh, Uncle Steve's Irish Stout on Nitro. But we wanted to do like a really light version of that. We couldn't do it in Nitro, however, but we did make a light stout and we call it Furry Buddy um, because it's just soft and creamy and gentle and lovely. And um, another low ABV, low cal, super flavorful beer for somebody who might like things that are a little maltier or um, less hoppy. Um, so this this one I've been excited about. And of course, for those of us who are Huma drinkers, we know that Huma is not necessarily a, a school night beer every night of the week um, because it clocks in at 7-7. Seven, seven. So we made little Huma and this beer blew my mind that we were able to get it um, down um, to the ABV and the calories and still retain all that awesome IPA flavor. And then of course, part of the OG portion of the family, it's actually not beer, but this is soft parade seltzer. So it's, um, we've already got soft parade shandy and we've got original soft parade. We wanted to bring something else that was low cal, low ABV into this pack that still, um, was part of our, uh, inspired by our original uh, portfolio. And again, a seltzer is another great mix. So if you have a gluten allergy or you just don't want to drink beer or like beer, you've got this. It's kind of like uh, liquid skills. <laughs> that's okay, I'm gonna try it and tell you what I think. But can, so give us a little background as to how one creates a low calorie beer. I mean, you're using all the same ingredients. So what are you doing differently to make these, these low calorie options? Um, well, the main thing um, Ooh, we're doing is- That's uh, really pretty. Wow. Right? Yeah, it's like it's a little rosé. Like wow. That's a um, gorgeous color. So we, we reduce the amount of uh, fermentables for one. And then the second part is that we ferment all the way out. So there's no residual sugar. So you make sure that what you're fermenting is going to be uh, below the threshold of the ABV that you want. And then in order to make it low cal, you make sure that all the yeast consumes out all the sugar that's in there. So you don't end up with that residual sugar, which is where the calories come from. Got you. But you're still retaining a lot of the flavor that you're, that you're doing. Yes. And that's the trick of uh, the, the brewers. Um, and uh, that's led by Tony Hansen, who's our chief innovations officer and, he could probably weigh into that more so than me because um, it is far beyond um, where I started <laughs> as a brewer uh, for the guys to be able to just make super flavorful um, low, cal low ABV options. And we actually started this program with locals about three years ago when we stripped it down and rebuilt it. And um, yeah, that's a good place to start. I mean, that's one of your most popular beers, it seems like, uh, definitely through the summer. It's a traditional American lager. It's the, it's the beer that when people don't like craft beer, you can, you can serve them, meaning they don't like the big, full, heavy, hoppy beers. You can give them this, and they're going to feel pretty familiar with the flavor profile, right? Exactly. This is the most, I guess, universally approachable style uh, in the world. It's um, a light lager. And Super light. We've been making this since 2004 because when we started in Bel Air, nobody really knew what um, craft beer was. And so we had to, to start with something that they were already familiar with and then ease them into the spectrum of uh, where beer was heading and where we were taking beer. So um, my grandpa and my parents weren't you know, into craft beer. They were, everyone was scared of it. So I had to make locals um, for the local folks who were familiar with um, this style of beer. So I'll cheers to all of our locals cheers and all of our locals light supporters out there. Absolutely. I love this beer because it, it, this, it's, 
I think people who don't uh, aren't really into to craft beer, they don't get how hard it is to make this style of beer. There's nothing to hide behind. You got to yeah. be spot on. <laughs> it's got to be consistent to have it that clear. I mean, that's a lot of talent there. So well done to to Tony. So of it's yes, yeah, as, <laughs> as simple as this beer is and looks and tastes like it's. Um, like you said, there's, there's nothing that it can hide behind. And we love it because we we kind of coined it beer in its simplest form. It's one malt, one hop, water, and yeast. And um, it's nice and clean, crisp, and refreshing. And anyone who's ever had um, industrial lager in their life can relate to this. And it's it's a industrial style or crafted um, but handcrafted, but in handcrafted. Exactly. I like that. Joe, someone asked if you can get four packs of um, any of these styles or do they only come in the refreshing, the refresher sample or? You, uh, so we've got one more round of that packaging coming through mm -hmm. and when we, whatever's left over from what we're able to fit in the variety pack. So usually we run out of one and then we have all these remaining ones left over. So it's very likely that you will be able to get three out of the four in six packs. Oh, nice. I believe okay. they'll be offered only from Bel Air, but if you're in Antrim, Travers, or Kalkaska County, or any of the other places we're delivering beer to you, um, we should be able to get them out to you. Perfect. Now, is Locals Light available in a six pack all the time? Locals is available in six pack all the time. Okay. It's available in 12 pack. We're going to be coming out with a 24 pack. And we also just released a 16 ounce 12 pack. So imagine Why this not? in the tall boy, which is totally <laughs> rad. Yeah. Perfect for summer on the boat, right? <laughs> exactly. I, I should have actually brought a 16 ounce or just to throw everybody off. <laughs> How did you get that in there? Yeah, you're so special. Okay, then this is the um, stout that you're talking about. And it, it's yeah, free buddy. So it's actually a fairly light colored stout. It's I can almost see through it. So it's not like it is. thick. So if you think about um, Guinness, which, you know, I think has a common misconception is this like huge, rich, you know, unapproachable beer because it's so dark. And a lot of times dark is associated with bitter, which isn't true, but it's actually really light and flavorful and smooth and sessionable. And that's what we wanted Furry Buddy to be. We wanted it um, to be able to break the barrier uh, of uh, the pre preconceived notions that dark beers are scary and strong and, and bitter. And uh, this is not. It actually really highlights how lovely uh, caramel and chocolate and roast malts can be in a sessionable format. It's not like it's going to take you all day to drink this. <laughs> oh my gosh, I absolutely love that. The first sip, like you said, it's very, it's love. It is a lovely beer. You get mm -hmm. tons of the malt in the beginning, little notes of chocolate, little notes of coffee. Um, but like you said, it, it drinks much more like a, a Guinness. It's not thick or heavy on your tongue. It's real. It is really light. Very. Mm -hmm quenching kind of. I think that's that's a delicious beer. I really like that. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. We have some at the pub that we were going to put on nitro, but since we can't growl or up nitro, it's not going to make it this round. So hopefully when quarantine's over, we'll start seeing some nitro versions of this. This is a personal, um, the, like a project, pet project for me, because I've been um, wanting to do nitro um, stouts and other beers in cans. And so hopefully... Uh, furry buddy catches on we're able to get um, some nitro uh, out to folks who are coming to the pub once we reopen and then maybe see what we can do um, with other light style dark beers into the future oh i like that yeah that's it's and it's something that would be diff i think a little bit more unique to the market as opposed to just another ipa or whatever this this is something absolutely a different. yeah now someone else just asked if any of these are available as bottles and it sounds like not right now <clears throat> they're doing the can except for the locals light that's correct. Um, all canned product for right now. Gotcha. Okay. Then we've still got Lil Huma. Lil oh, Huma. I just so like exciting. to say it. Lil Huma. <laughs> now, regular Huma is a bomb, right? It comes in at what? Over 7%. Yes. Don't don't scare people off of Huma too much. Oh, like, I, I love it. Don't get me wrong. But it also... But, but it is. It's, 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 a, it's a beer for the the graduate experienced beer beer level kind of sewer out there it's it's kind of it's my go-to pretty pretty much it when it's beer 30 um and i love huma because it's got this rich malt complexity and it's got um, a ton of hop um integrated throughout and it's just nice and balanced throughout and i love that and we were able to basically do the exact same thing with little huma except shrink it down 
And um, <clears throat> we're so excited about this. And, and the feedback that we've been getting about this has been so exciting that there may or may not be um, Lil Huma making uh, its regular appearance into the market. Ooh, um, exciting. And that's what, also <laughs> what's great about these uh, little packs is that it gives us an idea to explore and find out what people are really excited about so that we can um, start to forecast what uh, the future of our production is going to look like. You know, so we, we plan quarterly because um, the consumers uh, really kind of help guide uh, what we're going to make and when we're going to make it. So for all of you out there who are watching right now, whatever whatever you purchase over the next couple of weeks might decide what will be in packs to come from shorts. I love having that power, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we want to make, um, we want to do what we want to love to do, where we want to live and, um, and share it with people we care about. And so if you love uh, what we're making and have some ideas and want to help guide our ship, let's do that together. And uh, this is a great beer uh, example for that. Again, this whole pack really is. I, lo I like how you put them all together because I feel like you kind of took some trends you're seeing in craft beer and kind of put them all together in the pack. But from the seltzer, which of course has been blowing up like crazy to the, mm -hmm. low, you know, the low calorie ver you know, versions of, of different things. That's all stuff you're seeing um, kind of exploding in the craft beer industry. But it's kind of cool. You can test it out and see which ones your you know, customers like. Yeah, and we're seeing that with, um, so we produced a, a cocktail-inspired uh, seltzer pack. Um, and uh, similarly with our uh, Star Cut Hard Ciders, and it's, uh, everyone has a favorite, and it's awesome. There you go. <laughs> Love I got, it. I got Love it. it's just so handy right there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, this has been super fun. I think we're probably going to have to wrap it up here in a minute. Um, but the the uh, special refresher pack, which is, of course, our pick for beers of the week, is out on distribution on shelves right now. Right, Joe? You got it. So you can check it out, try it. If people want to get more information about what's happening at Shorts, maybe see the pub hours for takeout and to get some beers. Mm -hmm. uh, where do they get more information, Joe? Uh you know, Facebook, Instagram, and of course our web page. And then if you have specific questions, you want to reach out, um, cs at shortsbrewing.com, um, which is customer service. Um, myself, uh, my partner Scott, and a couple other staffers um, get those emails. So if you want to just tell us what's going on or what you want to see or what you're liking or what you can or can't find or what, you, you know, we, we'd be happy to help um, get some shorts in your hands. That's fantastic. A direct line to the owners. That doesn't happen very often. Pretty much. <laughs> very cool. Well, thank you for making such great Michigan craft beer. Everybody out there, check out our beers of the week, the refresher session pack from Shorts. And if you want to get more information, you want to head to mlive.com. Thanks, Joe. Cheers. Yeah, thanks for having me. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>